This video is brought to you by Exter. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to downgrade your iPhone 4 all the way back down to iOS 4 fully untethered and no SH, SH blobs required. Personally, one of my favorite tutorials on the channel. Hopefully I can help as many of you guys out. Let's get right into it. Now the first thing that we are going to need is an iPhone 4 of course, but this one must be the iPhone 3.1 model. This is the GSM model and you can find this information in iTunes or Finder. Uh, just make sure it is the 3.1 model before you proceed. Once we do have this phone, the next thing that we are going to need of course is our 30 pin cable. And of course I'm using a little dock here. You guys absolutely don't need the dock, but I just thought it would look cooler for the video. And the next thing we need is Mac OS. Now this tutorial is only going to be supported for Mac, but there is a way to do this on a Linux as well and supposedly on Windows, but it uses a different tool. I'm going to be talking about that more towards the end of this video. But for now, this tutorial is going to assume that you are on either Mac OS High Sierra, Mojave or Catalina as those are the three versions that will support this downgrade tool. Okay, so now that we got everything that we need, let's get right into it. Now go ahead and click on the first link in the description box below and click on the cherry flower jailbreak tool. This tool for some reason was archived by the original developer so it can only be accessed through the Wayback Machine, but you can still download it as you normally would. Just go ahead and click that download button and save that to your desktop. Now the next thing that we want to do is head over to ipsw.me and we're going to be downloading the IPSW files for the iPhone 4 GSM model. Of course, make sure this is for the iPhone 3.1 and we're going to download 7.1.2 and 4.3.5. And once those are downloaded, go ahead and transfer them into the cherry flower folder. So now we're pretty much ready to proceed. The next few steps are going to require us to use terminal. But before we do that, we want to make sure we put our phone into DFU mode. So while it's plugged into the computer, Again, this is very important, make sure it's plugged in. Hold the power button for three seconds and after three seconds, start holding the home button for an additional 10 seconds. So after about 13 seconds from when you start this process, let go of the power button and keep holding the home button. And now the phone will attempt to connect uh, to your computer via DFE mode. And you'll know that it connected when iTunes recognizes it in recovery mode. So now that everything is set up, we are ready to proceed with the terminal. We want to start up by typing in CD and we want to drag in that CFJB folder, which is the cherry flower folder. Now what we're going to do is fetch the blobs for iOS 7. So just want to type in dot forward slash iDevice restore space minus T. And then we want to go ahead and just basically copy the entire file name of the 7.1.2 IPSW that we just downloaded. So go ahead and paste that into the program. And once you hit enter, the blobs should be fetched and they should be saved in the SHSH folder. When you see these blobs, go ahead and copy the entire file name once again. And now we're gonna type in the following command, zcat, little arrow pointing to the left, SHSH, forward slash, and then paste what you have in your clipboard. And then we're gonna type in the little right arrow, SHSH, forward slash, paste once again from our clipboard, but this time replace the SHSH at the end with a plist. This is basically going to create two copies. One is going to be a plist and one will be an SHSH file. Once that is done, the next step is going to be pretty simple. We just want to copy the entire file name of that plist uh, file that was just created and type in a plutil minus convert xml1 SHSH forward slash and go ahead and just paste that uh, file from the uh, from the clipboard and then click enter. Now nothing is going to happen at all like the there is a lot of stuff going on in the background but nothing's going to happen on terminal um, but remember at this point do make sure that your phone is still connected to your computer make sure you guys do not disconnect your phone at all. Now the next step is going to be pretty simple as well but this command is going to be really large so just go ahead and maybe pause the video if you need to copy and paste this entire 4.3.5 IPSW, type in minus forward slash cherry JB, and then paste that IPSW. Now don't click enter just yet. The next step is also going to be pretty important. Go back into the SHSH folder and it just copy this number on either one of these files. It doesn't matter which file you click on, but this will be your ECID and then type underscore and then type iPhone three comma one 
underscore 4.3.5 underscore 8L1 underscore custom dot IPSW. It's a very long name, but once you do type that in, we can then type in a negative J and then negative memory. Now the negative J command is going to jailbreak the iOS 4 firmware, but if you don't include that string of letters, the negative J, then it won't uh, jailbreak it at all. Now at this point, we can actually type in the name of the exploit. I'm honestly not sure how to pronounce this name, but feel free to pause the video. Once you do type that in, then copy and paste the entire 7.1.2 restore IPSW, paste that into terminal, and then type in negative A, SHSH forward slash, and then copy and paste the plist that we have right over here in the SHSH folder, and paste that. And now once you guys are ready to hit enter, this will now create the custom IPSW and you can use this IPSW to basically downgrade to iOS 4. So this is going to take a few moments. I'm going to speed up this process, but yeah, this process might take up to five minutes at most, maybe a little longer if you are using an older Mac. But once this is done, you guys are going to see this freshly new created IPSW using terminal. Now we want to type in dot forward slash iponder32 negative p. This is going to put our phone into pwn DFU mode. Again, ensure that the phone is still connected to the computer. Do not disconnect the phone at all during this process. And now type in mv minus v shsh forward slash, and we're going to copy the original shsh file that fetched through the TSS server in the very first step. Uh, make sure this is the shsh and not the plist and go ahead and paste that as you guys see on the screen. And now what we want to do is type in shsh forward slash once again and paste that same exact command but replace 7.1.2 with 4.3.5 and hit enter. Now you guys are going to see that the, that the file name is now changed to 4.3.5 and now we are finally at the last step guys. We are now going to just type in dot forward slash iDevice restore minus e minus w and then simply paste the custom fresh IPSW that we just created about a minute ago. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and paste that. And once you guys hit enter, your phone should now be receiving the iOS 4 update, or maybe I should say downgrade. Um, the screen's gonna turn white and you're gonna start to see a couple things appear on the screen. And you'll know if everything is working correctly if you see that iOS 4 Apple logo with that little cutout. Really great stuff to see. Now during this entire process, this could take up to 10 minutes. For me personally, it took like maybe 10 minutes at most. But yeah, once the process has started, the phone will now be downgraded to iOS 4. This will take a little while like I mentioned, so just hang tight. And before we go ahead and set this thing up and wait for this thing to fully load, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Exter. Exter offers the world's slimmest wallet on the market. They're slim, high quality, and easily accessible when you're on the go. And these things are just so compact. All of their wallets come with the signature quick card access, allowing you to easily access your most important cards when you're on the go. Maybe you're boarding the next train and you gotta quickly tap your card. Well, Exeter's got you covered with everything. Now, personally, I've been using their Parliament wallet with my AirTag, and I got so many people asking me where I got this wallet from. I love that it can fit up to 12 cards in this really compact design. Like here's an iPhone 4 right next to it. It gives you guys an idea for how compact it really is. And if you're into card holders, they also offer those as well in this beautiful aluminum finish. I'm just really impressed by how slim this wallet is. And if you don't have an AirTag, you can actually pick up Exer's solar powered tracker that can be placed inside the wallet. And of course, if you guys are interested in checking it out, they're currently running their fall sale where you can get up to 25% off with code iClassic at checkout. Links are in the description box below if you're interested, and thank you so much Exer for sponsoring today's video. And there we have it guys, now we are officially booting back into iOS 4. I'm saying back because I installed iOS 4 before I made this video. I just wanted to make sure everything was working, but this is so cool that we were able to do this in 2022. Take a look at this. Um, so you actually have to uh, keep it plugged in in order to activate it. Um, that's the only way you'll be able to start using the device. But as you guys can see, we now have a, uh, let's exit out of this. We now do have uh, Cydia right over here, which is super cool to see. And the reason we have this, of course, is because we chose the option to jailbreak earlier on in this video. And uh, you guys can feel free to set that up. Now, I recently made a video talking about how to make an iPhone 4 usable in 2022. If you guys are interested in actually getting apps onto this thing, I highly recommend you guys check that video out. It'll be linked somewhere at the top right. 
Um, that video is going to go in depth about the apps so you can install all the games, all the nostalgic stuff. But yeah, take a look at this 4.3.5, super cool to see. And um, yeah, I mean, the fact that we can do this in 2022 is a pretty big deal. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, why does this work? The reason this works is because iOS 7 had what is known as an iBoot exploit. So every time you boot into that specific version of iOS, so in this case, it would have been 7.1.2, you could technically use an exploit to downgrade untethered all the way back down to 4.3.5, which is honestly pretty cool. And this also means that if you have another iPhone that is a 32-bit iPhone, so anything below the iPhone 5S, it can still be downgraded to its original iOS version if you have iOS 7 blobs. So for example, if you have an iPhone 5 on iOS 7, then you could technically dump its blobs and downgrade it all the way back down to iOS 6.1.4 and basically relive that iOS 6 experience without having to use things like Cool Booter or Nightshade, you know, like dual booting iOS. Like this is the legit deal. Like this is as realistic as it gets. The only thing I didn't like about this method is that every time you restart the phone, it's actually gonna show the iOS 7 logo for literally like three or four seconds. Um, this usually happens because every time you reboot it, it kind of has to boot into like this modified version of iOS. Um, so on top of that iOS is basically like, you know, bits and pieces of iOS 7. So that's something you probably can not change, but I will assure you that this is fully untethered. So you're still gonna have the full amount of storage on this device that you would on any other iOS 4 device. Of obviously granted that you know this is a 16 gigabyte phone you're not gonna have more than 16 gigs but you're gonna have as much as iOS 4 can allow um, and that's really cool to see on an old device like this but yeah I mean at this point you guys are pretty much ready to play around with this device maybe load some music onto it install some apps and some games of course having that jailbreak is gonna be really helpful to actually make that possible and like I mentioned, feel free to check out that video that I made a couple weeks ago. It goes into a lot of detail about how to actually make these apps work. Again, I'll have it linked in the description box below if you guys are interested in checking it out. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are alternative methods that you could try when it comes to downgrading on different operating systems. So in this case, if you're a Linux or a Windows user, there is another tool that you could try using. This is made by Luke ZGD. They basically took the existing Cherry Flower and Powder Snow scripts and they basically like combined those together and they made their own tool. And this is exclusively supported for Linux only. But the problem is I haven't been able to try it out because number one, I'm not that familiar with Linux, unfortunately. Like I tried installing a virtual machine several times on my MacBook. I tried running the tool in Linux with my iPhone connected to it, but it would just fail every single time. I honestly would love to try it out. Maybe the fix to this would be installing a fresh copy of Linux, so not dual booting it or using a virtual machine, but like actually installing it onto the SSD or the hard drive. But I have no experience with that, so that's definitely something I'll have to look into in the future. And for all my Windows users, you could technically use the Luke ZGD tool as well, but keep in mind it is not 100% supported, so some features may not work and the actual downgrade tool might not work at all. Like I personally tried to do this on my MacBook Pro using Windows 10 through Bootcamp and it did not work. I was not able to hash the IPSW or create that custom file like we did in this video today. So keep that in mind. I mean, you guys are free to try it out. Like this tool is still being updated pretty frequently. Like the developer is like, you know, changing things up and updating it over time. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if support is brought to this in the future. But again, I have no idea if that's ever going to happen and I'm still going to recommend you guys use Mac even though it's a bit of a lengthy process. It is pretty easy. I mean, it does work if you are on a certain Mac OS version. So in this case, of course, Mac OS High Sierra, Mac OS Mojave, and Mac OS Catalina do seem to be working perfectly fine, but anything above Catalina probably won't work. Like I haven't personally tested it out on any other Mac OS version except for Monterey and it did not work on Monterey for me. So maybe if someone else wants to try it out, comment down below and see if it works for you. It'll be nice. Maybe I'll update the description box of this video to see which Mac OS versions are supported. And of course, I just want to say before I end this video, if you guys are planning on updating your iPhone 4 back to iOS 7, then don't do it through iTunes. Otherwise, it's going to like ruin the process and the phone's kind of going to be boot looped. In order to fix this, you actually want to download the script called Powder Snow. This is made by the same exact developer who made 
Cherry Flower Jailbreak and go ahead and simply download this. I'll have it in the description box below, but it's the same exact process. You're gonna um, basically drag it onto your desktop, open up Terminal and we're gonna CD into that folder. And then once we are CD'd into there, uh, go ahead and simply just drag that just like that. And we just wanna type in iponder32 minus R and hit enter. And this is basically gonna remove all of the NVRAM files and all that stuff. It's basically just gonna remove like anything that would prevent this phone from being able to be updated to iOS 7. So after a while, you're gonna see the iTunes logo appear on your phone. And again, make sure your phone is plugged into DFE mode while you are doing this from the beginning to the end. And you can simply do a restore through iTunes and your phone will be back to iOS 7. But just like that guys, this video is officially over now and I really hope this helped you guys out a lot. And if you guys are interested in installing iOS 4, like I said, you know, try it out. It's a really fun project. I'd have to say once you have everything downloaded, once you have the Mac version that you need, once you have the iPhone 4 and all the IPSWs downloaded, it's actually a really short process. Like in, like in total, it shouldn't take you guys more than 30 minutes to do everything. And then of course, feel free to install whatever you guys want. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be making more videos in the next coming weeks. So stay tuned. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.